Did you know that within our galaxy alone, there are an estimated 100 billion planets, yet we have found zero confirmed signs of intelligent life? What if the universe is silent, not because we are alone, but because we're simply too primitive to hear the conversation? This is the great silence, a mystery that's baffling scientists. But what if the window to detect a civilization like ours is only a few decades long before they vanish into a technological singularity? We're going to dive into uh, a startling new theory that suggests just that. We'll also explore an anomaly closer to home, the bizarre interstellar object three, I divided by Atlas, which is displaying a mysterious anti-tail that points towards the sun, defying known physics. And finally, we'll look at humanity's own leap forward a stunning new video from a nuclear fusion reactor in action, a star in a jar that could one day power our world. These are the topics I want to share with you, right? Sharing knowledge is so good, right? So I always try to do that here with you. And if you like my work here, want to show your support, like want to help the new Michio Kaku, but I don't know how, it's very easy. Leave a like or subscribe to the channel too. It helps a lot, right? Leaving a comment, leaving a like already helps a lot for YouTube to understand that this video is relevant and spread it to more and more people. I'll leave my sincere thanks to all of you here interesting topic today, isn't it? So let's go try to understand this crazy wild universe. Let's start with this very interesting article here from Universe Today, right? As I told you, here they are questioning, right, saying, right, that alien civilizations would be detected by us in a short period of time, which they call just a blink of an eye. Why are they saying this, right? So the text here says, astronomers suggest that the reason we have not yet detected alien civilizations may be linked to artificial intelligence. The study starts from an idea of Carl Sagan back in the 70 seconds called the communication horizon. Here is Carl Sagan, all happy here with a shadow. This communication horizon is the point at which a civilization becomes so technologically advanced that its means of communication are no longer detectable by us. So Carl Sagan, back in the 70 seconds, already had this idea about how an alien civilization could be communicating if it were very advanced. This communication horizon idea is a fascinating and somewhat terrifying solution to the Fermi paradox. The paradox simply stated is, where is everybody? The universe is ancient. Civilizations should be common. Sagan's idea updated with our modern understanding of AI, suggests a chilling possibility. It's not just that they use different radio frequencies, it's that their communication might be embedded in neutrino streams, gravitational waves or quantum entanglement methods, so advanced they would appear to us as simple background noise or a natural phenomenon. Look, at the time, Sagan estimated that this transition would take about 1,000 years, but the accelerated advance of computing and artificial intelligence could reduce these windows to just a few decades. And people, this is true, look, you you take those AI videos from two years ago, right? Like that classic video of Will Smith eating spaghetti, which is a super bizarre thing, and take today's videos. Today, I even posted on my Instagram stories that like, I can no longer distinguish some videos, right? Whether it's AI or not. Now, there's this surge of videos of animals doing things, right? Dog saving a baby, cat saving a baby, cat being carried away by a hurricane, you know, and seriously, they are very realistic videos. So there has been a very accelerated technological leap. So at the time Carl Sagan proposed this idea, technology wasn't evolving that fast. Nowadays, the growth is exponential, right? Technological evolution is exponential. Well, as a civilization evolves, it adopts more complex forms of communication, perhaps with neutrinos or methods beyond light, and it becomes invisible to our current technology. So it could be that the technology of these alien civilizations has evolved so much that our equipment here is too archaic to try to detect it, right? Thus, humanity would only have a cosmic blink of an eye. Is that what they say here in the title? Humanity would only have a cosmic blink of an eye to capture signs of an alien civilization before it advances beyond our detection capacity. This may explain the great silence, right? The apparent absence of detectable intelligent life in the universe. So what they are trying to say in this article 
is that the period of time in which an alien civilization has a technology compatible with ours is very short because for us, for us, it is being short. In a few decades, we will already abandon current means of communication for other things. AI will do practically everything. So the growth after you create a type of technology, it ends up paving the way for other technologies. And as I said, the growth is exponential. So it's very fast. At the time, Carl Sagan didn't have this vision because it was the 70 seconds, it was other things, an analog world, right? So they say that the moment we could detect alien civilizations with our technology is very brief. So it will be difficult for us to detect anything because the period of alien technology compatible with ours has to align with our period, right? The technologies have to be in the same era within space-time. And what is the possibility of this happening in a universe of billions of years? A lot of sense. I found this idea in the text very interesting. If you liked it, right, leave your like, leave your comment if you agree, right? To me, it makes a lot of sense. Now let's watch this very interesting video here that shows a tokamak in full operation. Look, a video that shows a plasma pulse from the ST40 tokamak filmed at high speed. I can barely say it, which is 16,000 frames per second. Wow. Each pulse lasts about 0.2 seconds and displays the visible light from the plasma edge in pink tones. So here we have an accelerated image, right? And the plasma would be these pink tones here in the image. Look at that, man. Energy through nuclear fusion. The core is too hot to be seen during the experiment. Lithium is injected into the plasma and it glows red when excited and turns green when ionized, revealing the magnetic field lines. For those who don't know what a tokamak is, a tokamak is a system to try to generate energy through nuclear fusion, and it generates a very strong magnetic field. Some people say, but how does a thing like this, a nuclear fusion reactor, not destroy the building where it is installed, right? Because, man, it's things that are sometimes hotter than the surface of the Sunday. How does this not destroy the building where it is installed? So that's where the magnetic fields come in. The tokamak creates magnetic fields that contain this energy so that it doesn't destroy everything, right? So that's why the building is not destroyed. They create a powerful magnetic field there and contain this plasma. Then they say here, right? The people who made this video, right? They say that the use of lithium is part of the $52 million upgrade at the ST40 in partnership with the US and UK. Department of Energy, based on studies that show that the element improves plasma performance. Look at that. The research investigates the so-called X-point radiator regimes, the XPR, an operational mode, right, that can cool the plasma before it hits internal components, reducing wear and increasing the efficiency of future fusion plants, right? As I've said here, nuclear fusion is still a bit complicated because we spend more energy to keep it on than the energy it generates itself, right? The energy spent to keep it running is much greater than the resulting energy from the experiment. So it has to be the opposite, right? The energy generated has to be greater than the energy employed. And we haven't reached that level yet, right? But, but there it is, research is evolving. I think soon we'll be able, soon, right? In a good few years, we will have energy through nuclear fusion, which is a very abundant energy, practically almost infinite for the use of humanity. And I will continue to follow all this research here so you don't miss anything. You know what to do, follow the channel. Now, let's talk people about uh, 3i divided by Atlas, right? The object of greatest interest to most people interested in astronomy recently. A new image of the interstellar object 3i divided by Atlas, captured on August 2nd, 2025, by the two-meter twin telescope on the island in the Canary Islands, shows a faint jet pointing towards the Sunday, something anomalous, since the tails of comets, right, the tails of known comets, always extend, right, away from the sun, pushed by radiation and solar wind. In the case of three, I divided by Atlas, it has a faint tail towards the sun, right? A tenuous tail. This structure called the anti-tail had already been observed previously by the Hubble Space Telescope. 
Here is the article that reports that the sun is in this direction here, and here is the anti-tail, right? This more accentuated light on this side here, and the sun is in this position, in this direction, right, to be more precise. Well, and then the anti-tail intrigued astronomers again by challenging the expected behavior of common comets. According to Avi Loeb on Medium, particles of the ideal size to scatter light, right, should be repelled, not attracted in the direction of the Sunday. Avi Loeb and physicist Eric Seo, right, worked on a study to explain the anti-tail, but the author criticizes, right, the fact that many specialists treat 3i divided by Atlas as a simple comet, ignoring its anomalies. He lists several of them here in his text, right? Each of which in isolation would already be extraordinary, right? So he, um, I'm gonna talk here, right, here it is. Uh, I'll show this later. Let three I divided by Atlas pass by here. So listing the strange things here, right? That Avi put in his text, look, an anti-tail facing the Sunday, much greater mass and superior velocity to other interstellar objects, right? Astronomers explain this because of its advanced age, right? Because it's very old, so it's been accumulating speed. But anyway, it's a strange thing when compared to other comets. A trajectory aligned with the ecliptic plane, right? That is also a very rare thing. Closed passage to Mars, Venus, and Jupiter. That thing you always talked about, right? That apparently 3i divided by Atlas is making a movement that seems to want to probe these three planets. Let's really dig into why this list is so baffling to astronomers like Loeb. The anti-tail is the most visual puzzle. The sun's radiation pressure and solar wind always push comet tails away from it. To have a jet pointing towards the sun suggests a different kind of propulsion or particle ejection, something that isn't just simple sublimation of ice. What force could be overcoming the sun's immense pressure in that specific vector. Then there's the trajectory. It's not just that it passed close to three planets, it's that its path seems almost optimized for observation, a gravitational assist trajectory that seems uncannily precise, almost like a planned mission. When Loeb points this out, he's highlighting the sheer improbability. You combine that with the strange composition, uncommon composition with nickel rich gas, but no iron, um, about the nickel without iron people, there is this article here, right? That was published by the VLT staff at ESO, where they report the detection of iron along with nickel. Here it is, right? In an unbalanced proportion, right? There is much more nickel than iron, but there is iron. The iron is there in trace amounts, right? Because it has a different chemical composition and it is less volatile than nickel. So that's why there is more detection of nickel than iron, right? This is not me talking. The article is here, right? So Avi, I think, forgot to include this here, right? In his list, this observation, right? This, this update, actually. But anyway, continuing here, right? Avi Loeb's list of the oddities of three, I divided by Atlas, right? Yeah, it has low water content, 4%. Uncommon for a comet, extreme negative polarization, right? Never seen before, right? Which makes three I divided by Atlas. Truly anomalous, that's a fact. Um, and origin close to the direction of the wow signal, right? Detected in 1977. This here is a big speculation, right? Which we cannot dismiss, right? Because it really comes from that direction. But associating the wow signal with 3i divided by atlas than I think it was. I don't know, right? Uh, I only see him making this association. I don't see other astronomers doing it, right? But anyway, Loeb concludes his text here by pointing out that future measurements such as possible passages of 3i divided by atlas close to the European probes, Clipper and Juice, which I mentioned yesterday here, probably will not detect significant material due to the low density of this gas. He suggests that the scientific community will need to reevaluate the case in the future, perhaps with the help or the risk of artificial intelligences more open to the investigation of anomalies. 
right, to perhaps use artificial intelligence to review, right, these, these data and everything else. But there you go, right, 3i divided by Atlas. That's a fact, right? And we'll keep following it, right? There will still be images from Hayabusa 2 that will bring an image. We believe it will bring better images, right? Then even the Hubble image, because of the proximity it took, the images, at this moment, the images are being processed. The data is being processed. But I think soon we will have this data here for us to observe and understand what is happening with this 3i divided by Atlas. When this Hayabusa 2 data comes out, I'll bring it here to you. To not miss anything, subscribe to the channel. And I want to bring a new feature here on the channel now, which is to bring some comments, right, from you who are always here participating in the videos, right, and giving your support and everything else. So, I decided to bring some comments that you send at the end of every video. At least I will try to do this with a certain frequency. So the first one I'm going to show here is this one from our friend. Where is his name? It's Richard Hector, right? So he said here, great content. It's explanatory. Criticism is part of it because I always see people complaining instead of taking advantage of the synthesis that the channel brings. Criticizing is easy. Go study, simplify explain and still produce all the content. It's not easy. Congratulations on the easy to understand information, even for lay people on the subject. So here is Richard Hector's comment. Thank you very much, man, right? Criticism is really part of it, right? There are people who sometimes get upset because I end up not saying what they wanna hear, right? Like maybe keep saying that 3i divided by Atlas is a spaceship. And we have to be cautious when talking about these things because we are not sure even the question of the comet, some people say uh, the channel always gave 100% chance of certainty that it's a comet. I never said that. Find a clip where I gave 100% certainty, send it to me because I never said that. Even about the comet, I don't say it's a comet, right? So since I started addressing this topic here on the channel, I've always said, guys, it has a higher chance of being a comet than anything else, than anything else. But there is a possibility of it being something else. It's different, okay. So thank you very much, Richard, for your comment. So I'm gonna start doing this, people. Whenever I can, I'll bring your comments here, right? You who are always supporting, right? Because, man, we are a community and I feel very, I feel very happy to have you here always supporting me. This is very important to continue doing this work here on the internet, right? Sometimes there are people who really are a bit heavy-handed with criticism, right? Ends up going to the personal side. This ends up discouraging us, but your comments, the people who are always supporting, are what give us the energy to continue doing this here. Okay, so that's it. I'm signing off with this video. A big hug to you.